so let me just start out with a question for Randy, just to kind of put this in perspective. Um, how much money do you expect to save by moving to cloud apps? It's going to be five million dollars that's in cash over the next um, three to five years. And out, out of, you know, how much of your budget is that, and what's it going to fund? You know, like what, what do you get by saving five million dollars? I get to survive this year so that with all my budget cuts, we can actually, you know, work on other projects and other systems. Okay. So um, let me just ask you another question. When you set out to do this, you know, what were the drivers in your decision? The, the, uh, most of the people in the city are, were pretty dissatisfied with the current email and calendaring system that we have. Uh, we use Novell GroupWise, and they really wanted a change. And the economics in the city of LA are very severe. So when we set out to do this about a year and a half ago, they weren't as bad as they are now, but they were definitely declining. And so um, we put out an RFP and went through the process. And at the end of the day, through the rigorous process, we determined that um, what would meet our needs would be going to Google at a you know, significantly lower price. And it would get us um, much further in technology than we were today. It would really leapfrog where we were. And so those were the... So <coughs> start, starting over was an opportunity. Yeah. 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 I mean, we could have upgraded what we had, but it really wasn't going to get us much. It was yeah, I think that's such a key point. You know, this is a fabulous opportunity to start over. So, Dave, when you started thinking about uh, the enterprise, uh, how different is government from, you know, say, a big corporation? Um, you know... Technology-wise, I wouldn't say there's significant difference. Um, the the difference is uh, in with the government. Of course, you operate in the public sphere, and you know, uh, in in the private sector, I wouldn't have the equivalent of going and being on you know local access television in front of the Los Angeles City Council to explain why cloud computing is not the devil incarnate and and why it's a good thing for the city of LA. So in many ways, you know, there's a whole other layer to it that doesn't so much Well, you know that the default permissions on Unix is 666, right? So it's got to be... <laughs> 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 it's got to be the devil incarnate somewhere here. <laughs> uh, so, so when you say uh, defending it, what were some of the biggest objections that were raised? Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of... Uh, misunderstandings of cloud computings and there's a lot of fear, uncertainty and doubt. Who owns the data? How is it managed? And I think people who are accustomed to having data stored within their four walls yeah. kind of know who to yell at if it's not working properly and, and no, can point out where that data is. The concept of cloud computing where data can be you know, sliced up into tiny little pieces and distributed over a massive yeah. compute infrastructure is just kind of scary and yeah. it's naturally scary and it's it's hard even on a whiteboard to reasonably explain how a system like that works if you were used to the last generation of technology. That's right. I still remember many, many years ago, it must be 15 years or more where somebody was asking Bill Joy about, uh, you know, of, of Sun at the time, about his, uh, um, you know, use of cloud email and he was like, I feel really scared when all I have is on this device. I can lose it. Yeah, <laughs> right. it could get stolen. And uh, you know, we're actually starting to realize that the cloud is, in many ways, can be more secure, more robust, uh, more reliable. Uh, yeah, I, it, yeah. I, I think it's people that are in technology when they understand the facts. It's pretty. You, you can sort of get through the facts and say, yes, I understand why it's more secure. Why the economics are better. Why. Uh, uh, all the logical reasons, but there's a cultural side to it that is very fundamentally separate, which is just about trust and about just taking this leap into something that's very different. And that is something, frankly, that only happens, you know, one by one over time. And I think yeah. it takes a while to get critical. So, yeah, mass. Th th it, uh, maybe this is a question for you, Randy. Is there a point at which cloud becomes the new COTS? Uh, you know, where it's just, oh, okay, we got it. You know, you can just do it without having to go through all the hoops. How far are we from that tipping point? I, I think that what you're going to see from the city of LA is more cloud applications 
more hosting of data in the cloud. Um, I don't think it's going to be an all or nothing proposition. I'm sure we'll keep some stuff, you know, hosted on site. But for the most part, our direction is going to be, you know, to get it out of our data center, get it out of an earthquake zone, you know, get it out of, um, you know, a department that really has been hit significantly by budget cuts, yeah. and let us focus on areas that are going to derive more value you know, for the city, for the residents. So when you think about, you know, the hierarchy of applications and services they're going to use, you're starting with email. W what do you see, like, what's the, the roadmap for moving to an all-cloud or mostly cloud future? Um, I think we're, we're going to have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. We're not doing it based on the technology stack, per se. Mm -hmm. You know, we're really looking at it more from, I think, from an application perspective. You know, can we host this outside? Can it be in the cloud? You know, are there any data privacy issues? Or, you know, w what are they all? And really approach it that way. But I think, you know, looking at it more globally and holistically, our direction is going to be much more cloud. So, um, Dave, or actually either of you could answer this. Um, what do you think about the, the issue of lock-in in the cloud era? You know, in one sense, cloud, you know, uh, is sort of easy, potentially portable. Uh, but we have uh, this issue, uh, which you know, I think has come up a lot around, for example, around Facebook, uh, of, you know, you get to a certain scale of a network-driven application, and you get a, a kind of a natural lock-in because, hey, other people are there. Uh, do you think about portability and exit strategies and the ability for people, for example, to export their data, move to another provider if, if there's somebody else who's more competitive? What's your thinking about the competitive landscape? How do we keep it open uh, going forward? Now, again, maybe. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I think for sure cloud uh, has the potential to pretty radically reduce the traditional lock-in of enterprise technology. Um, so, some areas more than others, for sure. But in the areas that we touch on, where you know communication and collaboration and documents and such, we have a policy um, uh, which we refer to as data liberation, which says people own their data or companies own their data, and they should be able to get it back in an open standard format whenever they want. So we, we have, by design, said we are not designing for lock-in. If there's some flavor of lock-in with our products, it should be because people like them and they're productive with them and they're delivering good value. But we don't, we don't aim to sign long-term contracts. We don't aim to have people uh, have some laborious way of having to move off of Google. If you want to move off of Google and use something else, it ought to be pretty fast and easy to do so. And that's a design point that comes so, to our So one of the real benefits is not only you can start small and scale up, you can also you can migrate. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So do you, do you find that to be true in your thinking about this? or? Yes. I mean, if you compare it, in, you know, from an IT perspective to other applications, I mean, look, if you're running SAP, how easy is it for you to get your data out and put it into another financial system? It's mm -hmm. a Herculean task. So there really is the potential for more uh, competition and innovation in the cloud era, would you say? I believe so, yeah. yes. So... Um, Coming back to the, the government context, uh, a lot of these decisions that should be purely technology decisions do get politicized. Uh, what's been your experience around the politics uh, of uh, adopting a particular uh, software approach? There was certainly a lot of politics involved in this process. I think a lot more than we had anticipated um, as we had gone through this because we really had sought out to try and find, as technology people, the best technology for the city of LA at the most affordable price that would meet all our requirements. So it was fairly simple. Um, however, what we found is that we ended up being much more publicized, you know, by the LA Times and some others about, you know, Microsoft versus Google and, and you know, making it very politicized in that way. And I, you know, I, I've learned a lot about how to migrate, you know, these kind of decisions in the future and what we need to be doing to be more proactive. Um, but it certainly put a, put a damper on and elongated our process. So it actually increased some of the costs through the political tax. <laughs> we, we, you know, if you took the politics out, we probably could have been done by now. Okay. So 
<laughs> Dave, could you kind of give us a forward look at some of the new kinds of things that are part of uh, to the Google tool set? I, I'm, one of the things I'm fascinated by with Google are, are the number of things that you guys invest in that don't appear to have an immediate financial return. Automated translation being a good example. Uh, LA being a polyglot city, uh, it would seem to me that there's some amazing power in that feature set. Uh, also, s speech recognition. When you put together speech recognition, automated translation, you know, there's, there's a real future there of, you know, the LA right. Star Trek communicator. Um, is that some? Is that on your 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 roadmap somewhere there? Um, you, you know, a lot of the technology we have, which w w when Google got into it, like speech recognition people thought was fanciful or what was the pragmatic application of it. And now you look at inside, Gmail's the first email application. You can actually read um, emails in your own native language that were written in 40 other languages. So one of the things I think Google's done well is take things that were fanciful science projects, so to speak, the thing that was keyhole and became Google Earth, um, and, and turn them into things that are approachable and usable by mere mortals. So our goal really with our apps and our services is to push more of this real uh, cloud-specific technology, things you can only do at massive scale, things like machine translation between languages, speech recognition, and push them into services that are simple and useful for people. So a lot with voice and video and, and, and multimedia communications. Um, and we're going to do a lot with devices, too. You, you've, you heard last week what we're doing, pushing the Android platform forward, uh, our Chrome OS platform. And if you think about it, a cloud-centric world, the devices are going to change pretty radically. Um, they're going to adapt to a world where the data is stored principally elsewhere. And um, you should be able to use whatever device you need in a very secure manner to access it. So I think Google's a company, if we're successful, it's going to be through some very hardcore computer science where we do things that are differentiated and unique in the market, but put into products that everybody can use. Yeah, I mean, I just again, c come back to this sort of polyglot nature of the city of LA. I, I, I'm up, I've been talking with other cities. I'm on the board of a group called Code for America that's working with cities. And you know, th this issue of uh, languages uh, is increasingly, um, mm -hmm. You know, how do, when we're trying to deliver services to all the citizens, right. uh, you know, how do we do that? And we have a potential for transformation there. Is that, is that something you're thinking about? It is something we're thinking about. We have to figure out how to really embrace the technology and use it. I mean, our initial focus has really been to try and get everybody on email and calendaring and then start really exploring a lot of the other tools and functionality that Google provides after we get finished. We're about halfway done. And, um, you know, another thing that Dave touched upon was, you know, another reason that we did this is because our current email system would, wouldn't work with I, iPhones and some of the other devices. And we have a lot of people, a lot of elected officials interested in technology, want to use the iPhone and Android platform. And, you know, of all the issues that I have to worry about, I don't want to worry about you know, just having a standard device and fighting with people about what device they want to use. So, um, you know, we figured out how to handle iPhone and Android so we can enable the workforce to use whatever they'd like out there. All right, a question for each of you, and then uh, we can, we'll have to wrap with this. If you had one piece of advice to give to a city, a county, a state, a federal agency that was looking to adopt cloud computing, uh, what would be your biggest takeaway? What should they think about first? I, I'd, I'd say know your requirements. You know, I think that we've, we delved into areas that we thought we knew some of the requirements, and we actually didn't. And I think that kind of elongated the process. Right, so you're going to publish what you learned in some way that could be reused? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How about you, Dave? Any, any thoughts about the what people should be thinking about when they're making this move? Yeah, I, I, I think <clears throat> large organizations, whether they're public or private, have to think about cloud computing as part of something bigger than that, of transform transformational change, 
of a government entity, of a business, et cetera. And cloud computing really is a means to an end. And it's a way to signify to an organization that change is afoot and we need to do some things differently. But if you don't, I think if you don't have that sort of mandate of, you know, this is why we're doing what we're doing, there's too many details and, and places you can get caught up. So you do sort of need this higher level push for that. We are, you know, times are changing. We need to do things differently. And cloud computing is one of the ways that we're going to do that. All right, thanks. So the opportunity is for major transformation. Absolutely. Uh, and cloud apps as they exist today is the camel's nose under the tent. But what we really want to do is, is uh, really move full on to a cloud future. All right, thank you very much, thank Tim. Thank you.